Hey there, internet friends. Welcome to That News You Care About, a weekly video game news show from the folks over at That Nerdy Site. Today is Monday, August 10th, 2020, and I'm one of your hosts, Trevor Starkey, filling in for Logan Wilkinson this week, who is out on a, uh, a personal matter. Um, so I'm filling in as kind of the lead anchor of uh, this week's podcast. Joining me this week, we have my Phoenix son, Cameron Abbott. How you doing, Cameron? Wasn't expecting that, but yeah, I'm good. What's up, nerds? <laughs> See, I, I feel like I had to just kind of take, uh, I mean, more or less, I just copied the doc that Logan has, and I was like, oh, well, we have Cameron on, so I can just keep the Phoenix Sun bit that he uses as my nickname and just uh, transpose it over to you. So, so Oh, you, you know go. what? No, I got it. I know exactly what it is. I'm the shadow to your Phoenix Sun, or casted by your Phoenix Sun. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, if you like what you hear, you can uh, support us over on Patreon at patreon.com slash that nerdy site. You can follow uh, all of us. Uh, you can like, like, subscribe, share the podcast with your friends, all that fun stuff. You can find everything on that nerdy site.com. Um, but yeah, let's just kind of dive right in. We got a couple uh, main stories here to, uh, to tackle this week. Story number one, uh, the battle, ongoing battle, it seems, between Microsoft and Apple uh, over Project X Cloud uh, is something that broke last week. Uh, and I'm going to be pulling from uh, an article from Business Insider by Ben Gilbert titled, When Microsoft's Ambitious Netflix of Gaming Service Launches in September, It Won't Arrive on Apple Devices, Here's Why. They don't seem to be like that focused on like catchy headlines over there at Business Insider. But the that's article Business reads, Insider. "That's Business Insider in a nutshell, baby." Yeah, they don't that's, care about that's they don't care about the clickbait or the headlines. They don't care. It's about yeah. the story. It's about the substance. Yeah. You don't you don't use your the URL dot biz and anticipate a lot a, like a long click through rate. Right? That's that's fair. Except they are a dot com. <laughs> so. Oh wait, gameindustry dot biz or gameindustry business dot com? This is Business Insider. Oh, I missed that. My bad. Yeah, no, yeah, they're dot com. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, no, Business yeah. Insider. I don't know. Yeah, th this was more a, a – this was outside of the, like, gaming – a lot of the gaming um, articles that I had read pointed back to this one. So I just kind of pulled in this as the uh, as the root because it had a, it has some good kind of pull quotes from, I think, both Apple and Microsoft here. So uh, the article reads, This September, Microsoft plans to launch a major coup in the video game business, the world's first game streaming service with a built-in library Netflix style. For $15 a month, you'll be able to stream over 100 games to smartphones and tablets, but it won't be available on Apple's ubiquitous iPhone and iPad. The reason, an Apple spokesperson uh, said on Thursday, is because Apple isn't able to review each game that's available through Game Pass. The App Store, quote, The App Store was qu created to be a safe and trusted place for customers to discover and download apps, and a great business opportunity for all developers, end quote. An Apple spokesperson told Business Insider, quote, before they go to go on our store, all apps are reviewed against the same set of guidelines that are intended to protect protect customers and provide a fair and level playing field to developers. End quote. Because Microsoft isn't submitting each game to its streaming service to Apple's review process, the app that enables access to those games is being blocked from publishing. Quote our customers enjoy great apps and games from millions of developers, and gaming services can absolutely launch on the App Store as long as they follow the same set of guidelines applicable to all developers, including submitting games individually for review and appearing in charts and search, end quote, Apple said in a statement to Business Insider. In addition to the App Store, uh, this is a quote again, uh, in addition to the App Store, developers can choose to reach all iPhone and iPad users over the web through Safari and other browsers on the App Store, end quote. A similar service offered by Google, named Google Stadia, has also run into roadblocks with Apple's App Store guidelines. It's available on Android phones and tablets, but not Apple devices. Given that Apple allows services like Netflix and Spotify without reviewing every piece of content, why not allow a similar service for gaming? The difference boils down to the medium, according to Apple. Games are interactive, unlike music and film, and there are consumer expectations baked into the App Store related to gaming. No in-app payment through Apple's built-in services, for instance, and no App Store rating, among a variety of other things. Microsoft's popular subscription service Xbox Game Pass started with the ability to download games from a large library directly to your console and PC. This September, Microsoft is combining Xbox Game Pass with its Project X Cloud streaming service, a combination years in the making. Instead of just being able to download games from the Game Pass library to your console and PC, they will also be, able to, they will also be streamable to smartphones and tablets. 
With Xbox Game Pass Ultimate this September, Microsoft says over 100 games can be streamed directly to your smartphone or tablet for $15 per month. You can then resume those games on a on an Xbox console right where you left off. Moreover, every major Xbox game published by Microsoft, from Halo to Gears of War to Forza Motorsport, gets published to the service at launch, alongside a smattering of third-party games like The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and Grand Theft Auto V. It's the persistent, it's the persistent library paired with the ability to stream those games to whatever device you've got that makes Game Pass so similar to something like Netflix. So the next evolution of an already successful service, Xbox Game Pass has over 10 million paying subscribers right now, and it's a critical next step in the in Microsoft's plan to end direct competition between Xbox and PlayStation for good. But without support for Apple phones and tablets, Microsoft's ambitious plan faces a major roadblock. A statement from the company pledged to continue working toward a solution. Quote, It's our ambition to scale cloud gaming through Xbox Game Pass available on all devices, the statement said. Uh, but we have nothing further to share at this time regarding iOS. So, um, as, a, as we kind of touched on at the top, uh, Business Insider, re, like treading, re, retreading a lot of ground we already know from you know the the past few months of XCloud and uh, and Game Pass news. Um, but this the major crux of this story being, hey, Apple's not playing nice anymore. Um, so. Cam, what are uh, what are your thoughts on the uh, the fight that's been going on between these two companies? It really comes down to one problem that will pervase, like will be pervasive, and is basically the beginning and end of this argument um, and like debate. Apple does not give a singular granular fuck. <laughs> yeah, as, as somebody who has like pseudo Lee worked for the company before i can guarantee you a single factor that is pervasive throughout the entire culture of apple as a company their approach to everything including marketing and development they don't give a single flying fuck they don't care they don't care when flash was at its height steve jobs said we're going to stop using Flash. We're going to stop integrating Flash. You have, like, we're, we're going to be moving into, from Flash to HTML5, and that's the way it is. And everybody's like, well, why would you do that? Why upset the market this way? Why disrupt it this way? Like, you're going to hurt yourself. And it hurt them for a long time. But here's the thing. The, the pervasive idea of Apple is we know what is best. We know what is culture. We know what is the next correct step. And we are going forward in that direction. Now, did things change when Tim Cook came on board? A little bit. A I think you bit. mean Tim Apple. Tim Apple. <laughs> no, Mr. Trump. Tim Cook. Oh, oh. No, um, no, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Tim yeah. Apple Cook. Tim that's, Apple Cook. Yeah. That's Tim that's Apple. what I said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, God, our president's a fucking moron. <laughs> why is it like? Why did you bring him up? Why we didn't need to bring him up? Because <laughs> I because I had to. That's that's what I think of now when I think of Tim Cook. How stupid our president is. I mean, it's what I think of when I think of many things right now, how stupid our president is. You have just but... energy right now that honestly is combative and difficult, it's... and that's my job, Trevor. It's, it's Fall Guys, job. baby. I had, a win. I had a win right before we started recording, uh, so I'm, 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 I'm in a zone. I had, I've had many a win today. Fall Guys uh, uh, is, is changing my DNA at its core. I'm almost at level forty on the season pass, so yeah, I am. I am. Uh, I'm fired up. People, Cameron. people I'm, think I'm, I'm fired joking up. when I say that this <laughs> game has fundamentally changed you as a person. Like Trevor, <laughs> it used to be my job to make up dumb things, like it's changing me fundamentally at my DNA. That's something Cameron Abbott says, not something Trevor Starkey says. Twenty twenty has really taken a new turn. Yeah, that's that's also true. <laughs> this has taken a new turn, and we were already turned up in this place. We did not need you. We, this, this site doesn't need two of me, damn it. <laughs> well, don't worry. I won't be diving into, like, paint shop photoshops or anything like that. You say that now, Trevor, but I never... Ex- like, you're you're on a slippery slope, sir. You are on a slippery slope. No, and no, because I definitely want, it, like, a quality behind, like, a Photoshop thing I'm going to do. So I might, like, learn how to do Photoshop a little bit more, but it, it won't be, like, MS Paint level of stuff. Well, to be fair... Saying. I created MS Paint stuff because I was a broke college student and couldn't afford Photoshop. Yeah. So, anyway, back to uh, back, back, back to yeah, the back story. To the, uh, back to, <laughs> back story, to Apple. 
Um, so Apple is like Apple just doesn't care, and it doesn't matter how much Apple users right now are gnashing their teeth. It doesn't matter how much they're going to be like, well, why would you give it to us? Uh, Apple doesn't care. Apple does not care what Apple customers think. They don't care. They mm -hmm. know that they will buy their product anyway. When I Apple decided to, like... take, to take the time to join up with what was at the time America's worst mobile network, <laughs> they didn't care. Yeah. And when people, when the variety, I worked for Apple during the Verizon launch. It was an absolute mess. It was an absolute terrible mess of miscommunication just over like not being prepared for it and it's like they should be prepared for it it's literally the biggest shift in technology for an for a small like the small core audience of computer and phone users that exist they're all going to be trying to switch over to verizon and people just were not prepared for that and it hurt and i was there and apple doesn't care apple doesn't care they're sitting on a mountain of money that is just they have in their like they have as a pile of mountain uh, a a pile of money they just sit on as their their cash base so that no matter what happens as a company even if they make a catastrophic failure of say they just stop selling things for six months they're gonna be fine they are sitting on that much money and like in just reserves and they are a like they have. The problem that you're running into now, the thing that you're going to be seeing now is the fact that there are going to be people, especially in this age of digital activism, who are going to be trying to fight so hard to try to get Apple to change their mind, and they won't. This is not, like, this isn't a debate. This isn't an argument. Like, if you want to use Game Pass on a phone, figure out a way around it and keep using your iPhone or get an Android. This, that's not going to change. This won't change. Yeah. Like, that's, Apple, I've seen... Apple doesn't change for anybody. More than more than any like seismic thing Apple has done, I have seen more people in my feed at least, which admittedly very small like you know sample size of people. But I have seen a lot of people basically be like, "Well, I guess uh, I'm I guess I'm going to strongly consider moving over to an Android at, at least for like a tablet kind of um, uh, yeah. offering for for XCloud um, if iPad's not going to do it." I, I mean. A uh, friend of the show, Snowbike Mike, on uh, the Kind of Funny X-Cast said pretty much as much on uh, this last week's episode of that show um, that he's basically, like, he's bummed out by this news, but as, like, a diehard Xbox fan, that's where he's going to go. Um, as as an Android fan myself, like, or as an Android person myself, like, none of this really impacts me, so I'm just kind of, like, watching from the sidelines. Um, but, yeah, also just being like, yeah, I mean, Apple definitely marches a bit of their own drum. I think there is a lot of, like double standards here that like they're they're saying in their you know outward facing statement that is not at all like supported by the actual practices on the thing i mean speaking of fall guys like there are probably dozens of clone apps on uh on the uh, app store right now that are just blatantly ripping off fall guys because it's the hot new game right now yeah, um, they and care. and they're getting like they're getting pushed through they're getting approved so the fact that uh or or even to the the point that's raised in this article which i hadn't even thought about hearing this news kind of um uh over the over last week um i didn't even think about until reading this article really is the idea that like yeah apple's not reviewing every movie that goes on netflix so like even that's a double standard and they they can you know put up the you know the bullshit excuse about like oh well video versus um you know gaming content is is you know one thing or another but it's like well, no cuz i mean you still like you're selling movies through, uh, I mean, what, uh, I don't, it, it would have been iTunes at one point in time. I don't know if, I don't know if it's iMovies now or whatever it is, but like they, they, I imagine have similar processes on that side, but they still allow Netflix because Netflix is such like a big player in the game. Um, so it's I, like, I think there's a lot of like double standards, which we see in all these like big corporations. I like so yeah, much but... of this reads as like, Hey, they don't want to, I mean, like, to your point, Apple makes plenty of money. They're not going to, you know, bat an eye over not, you know, getting, uh, not making a cut off of, you know, um, the Project X Cloud stuff, which, it, like, uh, who knows what that even would have been like. Cause, I mean, it, that's, that's certainly one of the, one of the big things here is like, there's no benefit to Apple for this because if they have the app on their, on their store, like, they're not making any money off of a, a Project X Cloud app. Um, uh, since people are paying for that through a subscription service, um, I suppose they could, I guess, 
you could buy like the standalone games through xCloud probably but like I can't imagine many people are going to be doing that um but it's, yeah it's just it's them keeping it, a competitor off their off their service was what it ends up being yeah and as yeah. long as as long as that's the case it's really not going <laughs> to matter for like and that's what it really boils down to is that it doesn't matter to um to Apple how much this would like this would help out their consumer who are Xbox fans or whatever it, that doesn't matter to them because at the end of the day, they, like I mentioned earlier, they don't actually, they know people will buy their product anyway, so they're not concerned with consumer friendliness. I mean, and the reality is it also boils down to, like this is very similar to when PlayStation said, well, we don't want to do crossplay because of security issues on, yeah. and it's like, really? The, the service that has one of the We're... most famous like security botches in, in gaming <laughs> history is going to be talking about security? In well, to be, I mean, to be fair, they would, they, they're learning from their mistake on that front. But yeah, no, I think the bigger issue was like when they came out and were like, no, it's because we're thinking of the children. We don't want, That's why you know, I mean, cross security play. for the children and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I wrote an article about that for OK Beast because I was so incensed by it. I was like, I need to uh -huh. write about this. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that was a, no, that's a thing. Like, this is the same kind of thing. It's just a matter of, they don't want to. Like, it. Like they don't, they won't get a cut of the pie, so they don't, they don't want to, um, and that's what it'll always boil down to. Uh, I will also say that um, when it comes to, especially on the front of this, like this current situation, is that uh, you know it's kind of in, like I will put it out. But how do I put this? Apple. Being like this, like if you're expecting a change at any point in time, please don't put your stock in that. I'm like I'm saying this just for your own benefit. As somebody who like, and this is the thing, I'm a weird person in that I don't like the iOS on a phone. Like you, like I do not care for the like the iOS on a tiny, especially maybe now with the newer phones. I might be like more convinced because they're like, Trevor, you know me. I got these big old fat thumb tips. Mm -hmm. That will just like hit multiple buttons on an i like a little iPhone like that. I used to just hate trying to like type anything into those things because of how big, like how many mistakes I would make on that. Yeah. Um. But when it comes to like Android phones, it's been like I've always like I've been a strong advocate for Android for a long time. Um. I think Android like is the Google Play Store, the Wild West, where they let anything go. Yeah. And it's crazy and it's nuts and it's like. But I mean that's. That's capitalism, I mean, the, baby. Like the Apple Store is the same thing at this point, pretty much. Pretty so, much, yeah. Like, like they, <laughs> they rubber stamp, they will green. If it's from a quote unquote trusted partner, aka one of these companies that just rips off other other games and puts it on iOS because they can do it because they're a quote unquote trusted partner, um, like like the Fall Guys rip off, like that came out right yeah. away. Uh, because, yeah, I remember yeah. I, the the first time I really ever became introduced to that idea um, on the App Store was I remember seeing uh, Donut County before Donut County even came out, like when it was getting like buzz from like showing off at like an Xbox event or something like that, and people were like, "Oh, that game looks really cool." I think actually it was probably PlayStation because it was a it was a, a PSX. Um, people were like, "Oh, that looks really cool," and then like. You know, I, I see the developer posting about, like, well, this sucks that, like, somebody's trying to beat them to market with a shoddy thing that's just trying to, like, bank on that, on their, their idea and their premise. And it's like, yep, that absolutely sucks. Um, and that was, like, the first just completely blatant ripoff I saw. Like, obviously, I've seen, like, asset flips and stuff on the Steam store and stuff over the years. Um, uh, well, there's better <laughs> ways of fighting against that on mm -hmm. on Google Play and um, on Steam. There's w avenues to fight against it. Versus iOS, once it's on there, like it's it'll be tooth and nail before it comes off. Mm -hmm. um, which is weird. Like I like it's true. It's like they kind of people. I was watching. Yeah, I was watching either. Um, no, it was on uh, Xcast, the kind of funny Xcast, where Gary's talking about Apple, and he goes, "Well, it's like a walled garden. Like it's like place or Wild West. Like Apple's much more specific." And you're right. Like they aren't. Like, if you're a quote-unquote trusted partner or a verified partner or whatever their, their criteria is, which are mostly Chinese companies that blatantly rip off um, other games and put it out and, like, just to like, get people buying in because of consumer misidentification or 
just it's the closest thing they get to it. Yeah, we talked on yeah. on this show um, uh, maybe a month or so back. We uh, we talked about the story where uh, Ubisoft was suing Google Play and the app uh, the App Store because um, a uh, a very blatant like Chinese uh, um, Rainbow Six Siege like clone was basically on the on both those stores had like hundreds of thousand had hundred thousand like downloads already and stuff like that. I mean, like I uh, so I've been uh, since. Uh, you got me hooked on the uh, the Final Fantasy, uh, whatever the the all the brave, not the bravest, not all the bravest. That was the shitty one. Um, whatever the Final Fantasy tactics oh, Divisions, on yeah. mobile. There you go. Yeah. Um, since you got me hooked on that, like I, I would see ads that would just be like blatantly, like the ads themselves would be just blatantly ripping off um, footage from like Pokemon Sword and Shield. Um, and it would be like 30 seconds of, or 29 seconds of that. And then like the final splash screen would be like, come by, like, come, come download, you know, um, uh, Mon app or something like that. And, and it was just like, wow, that is just complete copyright theft that you guys are, are doing in this like ad to try and like entice people over your thing. Cause it's like, like Pikachus and Charmanders and stuff, just like battling, via like a switch like somebody just captured game footage on a switch edited it into their trailer and just put it in i'm just like wow this this is some like just flagrant flagrant copyright abuse and i yep. like i posted about that and somebody basically echoed and was like oh yeah that like you know th- those just churn through because they just put it out there they get as much money as they can before you know somebody actually comes down and and tries to deal with any kind of legal hurdles and then they just kind of run away from it and it's like well then yeah, like you can't, you cannot convince me either, you know, Apple or uh, Google that you're actually doing any kind of review on the apps that are going onto your platforms. So like these statements where you're going after Xbox because Xbox is like a big name, just kind of a load of shit. <laughs> so yep, yep, one hundred percent. Like it's just it is what it is, and like it's gonna suck, and you either have to figure out a way around it or bite the bullet on it. But you know. It, it is what it is. As somebody who enjoyed their iPad, um, I, like, I very much love my iPad. Uh, like, I still have it. I, like, I'll still bust it out every once in a while because I have a book or two on there that I like to read every once in a while. Um, that's just, like, great for reference stuff, and also it's just, like, a, a phenomenal device. Um, I haven't really messed with any modern tablets from Android. Uh, I know the initial ones I wasn't a fan of, but I do enjoy having the iOS as, like, on that kind of like iPad, but I also don't really care for Mac, the Mac OS. Um, mm-hmm. I don't care for iOS on phone. So like, I'm a very niche person when it comes to what I will buy from Apple. And even then I have an iPad, like the, it's called the quote unquote new iPad, but it's basically the third version of the iPad and I still have it and it still works. Like it's a great device, but like I haven't needed to like, I haven't had new things that I want on it or new things that I wanted to put on it. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was my that was like my laptop for two and a half years. Like, it's a great yeah. device, but at the same time, like, you know, it, as somebody who's familiar with Apple practices on both the consumer and kind of working on the back end, this is very much typical Apple. And if you're expecting mm-hmm. Apple to break, they will not. Like, put yeah, your conditions I... out there, do everything you want. But I, <laughs> I saw I saw the gnashing of teeth when people would just complain all the time about AT&T's exclusivity that they had with iPhones. And honestly, if the bucket of money that they left on the table to go exclusive with AT&T wasn't enough to get them to leave, like to get them to make a change, nothing will. Yeah, I've just uh, like, I don't know what, for whatever reason, I've just never been, I've never bought into the Apple, the iOS stuff. Like even like I had, I had an iPod, I guess that would have been what, like 2000, 2005, I think I remember, like specifically, um, I I got an iPod to go when my sister and I were going to New York, there you um, go. and uh, and I remember, like, I, get, I got that from Sam's Club, because I think, I, yeah, because I was working there at the time, and uh, um, had it, and like, ultimately, like, just realized I was never going to really use it when I got back. So ended up like taking it back, returning it. My sister 
did the same thing, but she kept hers and she kept using it. And because of like Sam's Club's like electronics return policy at the time, she basically just like kept returning it every couple years when it would go dead or something and they would give her like the new one whatever the new like ipod model was uh so she like kept that going for maybe six or seven years or something like that um and uh but even like she eventually walked away from it like my whole family i'm pretty sure is is like samsung verizon stuff so yeah, well, I mean, once you get into, like, once this, the Android smartphone became basically ubiquitous with, like, it created its own ecosystem between, you know, music service and apps and stuff, like, it kind of replaced the need for having a separate music device. But, yeah, I mean, I, for years, like, years rocked an iPod shuffle. And I'm not talking about, like, the cool clip one. I'm talking about the one that looked like a birth, like a, a pregnancy test. <laughs> okay, yep. I rocked that thing hard. I loved that iPod Shuffle. I could put like 250 songs on it, and I would just have a rotation going. I had just like, and the thing is, I knew it so well. I knew exactly how many clicks to get to whichever song I wanted to listen to. And nice. man, that 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 little iPod Shuffle got its use until it just stopped working after like after about three or four years. It just stopped working. And by then I had kind of like, I had just gotten my first smartphone, my first Android phone. And I was like, you've like, you've served me well, iPod shuffle, but you know, it's off to the great beyond for you. There you go. Well, let's dive on into uh, our second story of the day. Uh, is the U S games industry finally ready to unionize? No, uh, this is, uh, <laughs> okay, we're, we're done. I don't even need to go into the art. Uh, <laughs> This is uh, uh, inspired by an article by Jason Schreier of Bloomberg News. Blizzard workers organize on company Slack seeking pay increases. Uh, the article reads, Hundreds of employees at Blizzard Entertainment, the video game developer behind Diablo and Overwatch, are using the company's Slack network to organize a list of workplace requests, including fair pay and increased sick time. Results of the effort, a rare example of labor organizing in the video game industry, are expected to be presented to management as early as this week, people familiar with the initiative said. Uh, I think would have been late last week is when this was written. Um, A draft version of the list, which was reviewed by Bloomberg News, asks for changes uh, to how promotions are doled out, increased vacation time, and pay bumps for members of the customer service and quality assurance departments. The list was compiled and discussed in a communication channel on Blizzard's Slack with more than 870 members. Blizzard, a division of Activision Blizzard, Inc., said it will review employee feedback and consider changes to pay. Quote, We will continue to adapt our compensation to build and keep the workforce our company needs today and tomorrow. End quote. Dustin Blackwell, a, spokesperson, uh, a spokesman for Blizzard, wrote in an emailed statement. Quote, We understand that some Blizzard employees have specific requests and we look forward to hearing from them directly. End quote. No major video game companies in the U.S. are unionized. The movement inside Blizzard hasn't taken concrete steps towards forming a union, but they represent one of the largest instances of workplace organizing in the industry. Allegations of unpaid overtime and wage disparities between gaming executives and their workers have been topic of intense debate in recent years, and investors have pushed to reduce compensation for chief executive officers, including at Activision. Blizzard employees have long complained about their pay relative to peers in the gaming industry. In 2019, the parent company promised to conduct a comprehensive salary survey, and many employees across Activision Blizzard had expected to receive significant raises, people familiar with the situation have said. Last week, the company implemented changes to compensation that fell below many workers' expectations. So that was the uh, the, the the latest in um, Jason Schreier's kind of a uh, um, rah-rah let's unionize the industry um articles and i i i it's i say that and it sounds facetious but like i think he's you know trying to be a great champion out there on behalf of developers who might not have the um uh the the voice themselves to uh, independently unionize so um i appreciate that like this is something that he's clearly passionate about and so it's always nice kind of pulling in a story from him on the on the topic um i saw this going around alongside the idea that um, employees at Blizzard have been like kind of creating a an anonymous Google Doc that is like listing salaries, so they can kind of like compare against one another and and have a little bit more um, ammunition when they go and talk to their managers about like, hey, looks like I should be earning maybe more because I'm seeing, you know, four other people who have this job are making X number of dollars or something like that. Um, and famously, Bobby Kotick um, 
is uh what like made 40 million dollars last year um which is far more money than like any one person needs to be making let alone like the head of a, a game company like that um was so, it 40 million i thought it was like 20 like he made two million dollars and then um like i believe had, including like, like bonus packages and stuff it was 40 million Oh, was it okay? Like, oh, yeah. That, no, that's no, that's the, the number I. The I ludicrous number I'm thinking of is like the like however hundred of million of dollars of that he got in like company stock or whatever. Mm -hmm. or tens of millions. Um, I'm not sure. So, uh, so you kind of gave your your maybe yeah. thoughts right up front there of like, nope, the games industry not not ready to unionize here. Um, uh, do you care to expand on that? <laughs> yes, I will be more than happy to expand on it rather than just poo pooing, like collectivism or, or collective unionization among the workforce rather than just poo-pooing it I, like as i'm not a poo-pooer of it i think that it's super important but they are um to say they're ready to start the unionization of the of the gaming uh industry is it's a it's bold it's important that we keep championing it it's important that you know that jason schreier keep putting out articles like this because it gives hope and confidence that this is a change that is happening is it really happening no we are what we are seeing is um if you look at the unionization of other industries it is a slow methodical ever like everlasting fight even after you f successfully unionize it is a constant like it is a constant battle of attrition between people who are willing to demand better like better compensation for their work versus companies who are trying to eke out as much profit as possible especially in consideration towards companies like Blizzard Activision where they have shareholders and corporate like corporate business business ethics as they exist today is that the shareholder as a stakeholder in the company deserves more loyalty than the people who make up the company as employees that is just how executives operate because the highest level of executives are literally put in place by the people who have the most shares in the company and have oh, the most stake a, in it. I mean, like having worked in nonprofit, that's not even like a like publicly traded company kind of thing. It's like executives almost always put stock in in like customers or everybody else above employees. Like I yeah. I don't know how many times I've had to like speak up in all staff meetings and remind everybody above me. Uh, and that may have led to, you know, <laughs> uh, 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 like potential disciplinary action or whatever in the, in the past. But like, I've constantly been the one in there saying like, Hey, remember that like the people that you should really probably be focusing and taking care of most. And, you know, your most important customers are actually the people in this room, the employees. So, you know, treat them well and you can treat your, actual customers well or your actual stakeholders well and all that stuff and and yeah it's, it's incredibly frustrating as like especially because i you know studied management at asu where they tried to beat that out of me basically and we're like nope stakeholder like shareholders is number one and that's just the that is the like blind methodology of like make as much money as you can all be damned um and you know we've we've basically been what we're i don't know <laughs> I don't know how many decades it's been of just kind of like demonizing unions. Um, like I remember growing up, like everywhere I would turn, like unions are bad. Unions are bad. We need to bust the unions. We, and we also and live in an anti-union state. We, we, yeah, we live in a right to work <laughs> state, admittedly here in Arizona. Um, but like even, like even knowing that and admittedly, like my exposure to unions is very, very limited. But I remember like, I remember, um, working again, uh, when I worked at like Sam's club, um, they were like so like if if they got like a whiff of like you like anybody coming in and trying to organize a union like like executive or management or whatever like like pounced on that before it could try and, and blossom into anything um which is like absolutely like illegal and bullshit but doesn't stop it from happening because hey turns out the waltons have a shit ton of money that they're putting into <laughs> lobbying to to like keep any of like keep the law on their side in that and that's that's definitely like what we've encountered for again like the last at least 50 years probably of uh, yeah. of business regulations and, and whatnot i will uh, say union busting i will say this is an important thing to note the ideology behind anti-unions is not necessarily the the idea comes from two trains of thought 
and they are honest trains of thought. One is that as, like it comes from the, the spark of individualism, which is if I am performing better than all of my peers, shouldn't I be compensated for more, like for doing for providing better results or giving more work and providing better results? That's one train of thought, and there's a fault to that, and there's a flaw to that inherently in its individualism versus, you know, the... But, um... And the second one is the... Uh, I guess, actually, that's the only honest one. The second one is not honest at all. I don't know why I said they're both honest. Only one of them's <laughs> honest. And it comes from, like, an, a naivete towards the approach that is often used to... Um, like, that principle is usually brought up to people who ask, well, why are unions bad? Gee willikers, ah shucks. And then they give them this, like very naive look at what it means for like individualism versus collectivism, etc. But the, the second train of thought, which is definitely bad is the uh, perpetuation of the idea of a quote unquote, lazy union member, mm -hmm. a person who th who basically it's the same idea as the quote unquote, lazy professor, which is they have tenure. So they don't have to like, they don't have to worry about getting fired or well, he has a union, the union's going to back him so he can't be fired. Um, or he can perform, like, a, like he can do a piss-poor job, but it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, he has the union backing him. And mm -hmm. that's, and here's the thing, there is some truth to that. Like, we see that especially with, say, I don't know, police unions. Um, yeah. Uh, like, like, that's a very real problem in the law enforcement, you know, I don't want to say business, but the law enforcement way of life is... Police unions are oftentimes the root of a lot of the problems that we see with police reform not going through. Um, yeah, uh, we, I mean, saw, even, we saw it like there's always yeah. there's always anecdotal like stories like that. Like I remember um, the, like studying theater and stuff, uh, and like I, I mentioned, like I, I've had like bad exposure to unions because like Actors Equity would come and speak to us, and they would like brag i guess in quotes about like how at the time you know pre covid like right now in covid like 99% of the union is out of work but like even in the good times they were bragging about like 15% of the union having jobs um at, at any given point and those weren't like steady jobs it was just like oh that was how much of the union worked on union projects throughout the year or something like that it was it was absurd it was like well I mean, especially if I'm in Arizona where it's a right to work state and I don't have to join the union to do this, why would I ever join Actors Equity if like you're you can't get me like th the support for jobs or whatever? But I do remember um, hearing stories about like uh, and I don't know that I never really like dug into this, um, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, like I trust the person that was telling me these stories, the idea that like the orchestra union in uh, in Broadway uh, and also having now uh, worked at the symphony and had like a very cursory like exchanges with the orchestra union through like other coworkers and stuff. I'm like, I totally actually buy this now. Um, but they would say that the orchestra union in, in uh, on Broadway was like so strong that they had like guaranteed requirements for orchestra members, even on the plays where there was no orchestra. So like they would just have, you know, uh, there would be like stories about like, Oh, you know, a quartet of musicians just, hanging out in the basement of a theater while the play's going up uh, stairs, like playing poker or something like that and getting paid for it. And I like, I remember hearing those stories and being like, well, that's damn, that's a cushy damn job. Absolutely. <laughs> but you know, I also don't know, you know, what those musicians are doing the rest of their time or any of that kind of stuff. So well, yeah, but, like, those yeah. are the kinds of stories I, I think of when I think of like, yeah, that lazy union member story. Well, like the, it's an anecdote, but it also comes to the, and it, it's tied into things like the Cadillac queen on welfare. Mm hmm. Um, like these false narratives, like the, to say that there are every single person who's part of a union as a good person is going to be doing their job correctly and not going to be relying on the union to like back them in case of negligence on their part. It, like to say that's never going to happen, like that would never happen is false. The, the anecdotes exist for a reason. However, yeah. that does not change the importance of collective workers or a collective of workers demanding like good wages and steady pay part of yeah. the like this is the truth of it people um i want to bring this up in like but it's not it's tangential so i won't 
which is rare, rare for me. I'm turning into you, Trevor. This is not right. I don't like the way that this <laughs> dynamic between the two of us is going right now. We've swapped. You're just not getting enough wins in Fall Guys. That's that's what it is. I'm stealing your essence. I'm stealing your... Like, you won the first Fall Guys game among us at PAX, and I've won probably around 30 cents. So, so this I... This is uh, not... Like, yeah. this is... There's, there's something wrong in the universe. I think I might need to break my three-game rule, and I need to <laughs> over... I need to lap you to take back... Like, things aren't right right now. I mean, the balance you definitely is, got some catching up to we do. Are, we are unbalanced in this universe. The universe is unbalanced right now, and I don't know how to set it back. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of, like, yeah. a lot of potential unions. For, but, you, like, unions also clearly aren't protecting people. Like, I saw the, the Go Media news oh, yeah, la- that broke last week of, like, the, the basically them letting go of the entire um, video team that was, you know, theoretically protected by the union but that didn't stop the company from letting them go what it comes to is the union can only and this is part of the problem is that the go media union agreed to essentially give up their striking rights Mm -hmm. they said we won't strike never give that up like that is the number one thing you never give up because that's your most powerful tool that's your most powerful asset to force a company to have to restock their entire employee structure is such a terrible thing to have to deal with that it will virtually shut down the business for who knows how long is your strongest play as a union. Giving that up, Go Media giving that up, was a definitive death knell in their union basically being a toothless mutt. Like, they have no teeth. They, they, they can word as many strongly worded letters as they possibly can. People who are part of the union or used to be part of the union can say, oh, well, I stand by the union and what they're trying to do here. But the reality is that when you have no gumption, when you have no game, like you don't have any levers to play the game, the other side has all the levers, you're dead in the water. Like it's over for you. You don't have opportunities to make a significant change when you gave those all up at the negotiating table for health care. You thought sacrificing your striking rights was the equivalency of need, of getting like decent health care or decent whatever it's not you should never yeah. as a union and let this be a lesson to every other single union i hate that it's a lesson that has to be learned by some really great people who do not deserve to have happening to them what's happening to them at go like that entire situation with the management team basically Doing everything they can to just like slowly and methodically dismantle gut, any yeah whole... gut gut the thing and sell it off. Well, gut the thing to the point where it, like it's like gut it and sell it off to who? There's nothing there. Like they're slowly gutting it out to a point where it's a husk that they they can like honestly. My only idea that I have is that they might be writing it off as like a tax thing. Oh, I mean they, they like they, I mean the, the what Jim Spanfeller or whatever it is yeah. that that's doing that. Like he has a history of basically like coming in and and like pulling this kind of shit and like reducing expenses whatever to like oh, on, to paper, on paper show yeah. profitability or something and then sell it off for and and make you know a, a tidy sum af- with with basically no work um, i mean it's we see that happening all over the place with like newspapers and stuff right now but getting a little too far away from oh, the, right, uh, yeah. the topic of of blizzard unionizing. Blizzard, blizzard unionizing um blizzard doing this is a good first step or f- first good couple of steps but they are minimum three to four years out from any any decent unionization um, because the problem that you're going to keep running into is uh, turnover in this industry is so massive. Like mm-hmm. we've seen, Blizzard Activision is willing to fire. Well, how many employees did they fire so that Bobby Kotick and the rest of the board could get a bonus? Yeah, it's, I was trying to I was trying to look at that because I didn't remember if it was Activision Blizzard or if it was EA. It was Activision. Uh, and they Blizzard probably they that. probably both did it. Oh, they've both know, done it in um, the past for sure. You know, in in the last year or so. Um, but Without yeah, I didn't remember the, because no. yeah, it was, uh, was it, I think it was EA specifically that was like, that laid off a ton of people while in the, the call happening, like right at that time saying like, this was our most, you know, we, we, you know, had the highest grossing quarter of, of our history or something no, that, like that. I'm pretty sure that's Blizzard Activision. Cause I'm pretty sure Bobby Kotick was the one that said it on the phone. Oh, okay. Then I don't know. just I am then I am conflating those two, but I like it, it's, it's such a story it's that we hard. see from those kinds of companies. Yeah. Um, that yeah, it's like that's that's absolutely like the first thing I think of when I when I see these kinds of things. Like, 
like they already and because uh, other tweets I was seeing were like people basically sharing like here's how much I was making at Blizzard here's how much I was making as soon as I left Blizzard for any other company um, and it was like two or three times as much for the same job essentially at least in title um, and it is unfortunate especially like I, I I have friends that have have gone and worked at Blizzard uh, I don't know if I have any that are actively there right now um, but like I, I know people in the industry that have gone come and gone through Blizzard um, in their cycle and and like many of them you know I, I mean it's like all these stories there's always like you know exceptions to the rule people loving their time there or whatever and, and experiences and all that stuff but you can yeah love it's your like time and still know that the, you're being paid garbage exactly I mean the 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 tweet I always go back to at this point is like and this comes from my own like jaded like hey the reason I stopped looking for work at like an IGN is because I didn't like, I, I started to realize, Hey, they're not going to pay me what I was making, you know, in, even in the nonprofit sector to go move to San Francisco and like live, have a livable wage there. The, the, like the salaries at IGN, it was like, Hey, there's a reason that, you know, IGN staffers live with four or five other people <laughs> is because that's the only way they can make rent in San Francisco. And, uh, and so I got to get that point and I was like, Part of a dream job should be a livable salary. Like, how is that hard? Like, but too often companies like that, companies like Activision Blizzard here, exploit, hey, this is a dream job, so people want to work at these kinds of jobs, and they're willing to, you know, not get paid as much to work on Diablo or to work on Overwatch or uh, or StarCraft or something like that. Like, they are, they are willing to do that because those, you know, that, that company has such, like, a... a cash and mindshare behind them uh and it's unfortunate that like companies will absolutely exploit that nine out of ten times 99 of a, out of 100 times they will exploit that and and basically pay as little as possible to the employees um until they you know decide to band together and, and bring this stuff uh, uh to the forefront so like at the same time like i i like as an outsider and seeing like and hating crunch and all that stuff i would love to see the games industry like unionize i think I, I will beat that drum as much as i can every time as well um but i also like i i can't uh, i can't imagine it happening without it happening at some of the big guys like the big guy like one of the big companies needs to be like the first one that breaks it and and basically like sets the path for everybody and so the fact that jason here is calling out like this is the closest any of the big companies have ever come to something like this you know hopefully that means it will you know, they will get there eventually. Um, but yeah, if, it's definitely got to be like these guys or a blizzard or, you know, a, a major, or not, not a, these guys are a blizzard. These guys are like a, a Ubisoft or somebody um, has to kind of be the first one across that barrier to, to normalize it in the industry. I think any uh, final closing thoughts on the matter for you, Cam? Uh, for me? No, that's I'm good. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, that is uh, that's gonna do it for this week's episode. Uh, unless you have any uh, any articles or anything out there in the uh, the ether that you want to give a shout out to, Cam. Um, but I think we can uh, probably wrap it up. No, I don't, I don't got anything to shout out. Uh, yeah, listen to podcasts that we make. That'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, well, that is going to do it for this week's episode. You can find us over at patreon.com slash that nerdy site. Uh, once again, uh, if you can support us over there, we'd definitely appreciate it. But if you can't, no big deal. Be sure to like, subscribe, rate, review, share the podcast with your friends, uh, all that fun stuff. You can follow me at Trevor J. Starkey. Uh, you can follow Cameron at Rev Cabot. You can follow all of us at That Nerdy Site. And, yeah, that's going to do it for this week's That News You Care About. Uh, hopefully Logan will be back to join us again next week. Uh, thank you, Cam, for sitting in with me uh, kind of last minute on this one. Uh, always fun sitting and picking your brain. We talked a little bit. We didn't include it in the shout-outs or anything, but we talked uh, a little bit uh, at length beforehand about uh, Overwatch League uh, and kind of, like, theorizing what an MLB commissioner, deputy commissioner is going to, like, do to that but neither of us are versed enough to talk about it that we didn't want to include it in the show, but it was still a fun conversation to, to have with you before any of this, uh, before we started recording. So uh, I always appreciate sitting down with you, chatting, uh, and then, you know, also just kicking your ass in Fall Guys because that's, that's who I am now, Cameron. Oh, my I gosh. Am, I am the Fall Guys champion of that nerdy site, and you've this, got a lot this, of catching up to do. Is, you know what, here's the thing. This might just be the proof that 2020 is going to go on forever. <laughs> um, because the balances have been undone. Like, whatever balance there was between Trevor and I, like, there's always the yin and the yang. 
And now that's been broken, and I feel like my yang has totally gotten really deep into your yin, and I don't know how to stop it. Mwahahaha. Well, thank you for joining us. As always, stay nerdy and be good to each other.